Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Shuba. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. This is going to be a vlog style video. I am very excited. I have a three day weekend, so I have Monday off. And I thought I would take you along a long weekend of baking, reading books, which I'll share to you what I'm reading in a little bit, um, puzzling, I'll be playing video games, and just enjoying time at home. It is 10 degrees outside. It's only supposed to get colder. The roads are supposed to be very terrible this weekend. Freezing. I don't know how people are going to the Chiefs game. It's just going to be a fun weekend of doing all of the cozy things and I'm looking forward to it. No real plans at all and I'm looking forward to doing absolutely nothing but all the things that I want to do. Except I do have Pilates on a Sunday morning so we will see if I get outside of the house. I wanted to share with you the three books that I'm planning on reading throughout this vlog and this weekend. This first book is Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This back cover and this hardcover copy is beautiful. I, I took the um, I took the paperback, the, the sleeve is what they call it. Is it the sleeve? I don't remember what you call it. I took that off um, just to read. I usually do that when it comes to hardcover books. As you can see, I already, I started annotating this book. I wanted to just try it out. This is my second book that I've been annotating and I've liked it so far. I tend to forget the plot of a book and the plot is very important. Um, so it's been enjoyable so far. It makes reading a little bit slower, but that's okay. I uh, The whole point is just to really process and enjoy doing it, but also for retention and I feel like I'm interacting more with the book and so I like that. This second book everyone has heard of. I'm not going to give you the plot of this book at all. Um, <laughs> I am rereading this series with two of my good friends and one of them just finished A Court of Mist and Fury. So we are on this third book. I'm so excited. I will probably finish it very, very, very quickly. I do have the physical copy, but I will be listening to the audiobook as well throughout the weekend. I realize that with Akatar, I, I've enjoyed listening to it, to it for the second time rather than reading it. I'll probably do both here and there, switch back and forth, but excited to share my thoughts on the reread because I know that I enjoyed A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book, a lot more the second time through than I had the first time. And <laughs> this is a Polaroid from my bachelorette party that I'm using as a bookmark. This last book is a book that I got from the library. I went earlier this week. I don't really know much about this story at all. I just know it is supposed to be cute, Regency styled. Um, people, I did read online that it's kind of like Howl's Movie Castle. And I know I loved that story. Um, this is basically about this girl who is cursed. And now she has half a soul. And I, I know that there's love that's involved with it. Um, it says, it's difficult to find a husband in the Regency England when you're a round lady with only half a soul. You can't read that, but I just read it for you. Um, it just seems cute and fun. And it's super, super short. I think less than 300 pages. So I will be devouring this. And I can't wait to take you along and give you my thoughts. Those are the three books that I'll be reading this weekend. I'm excited to take you along with me and just to see what I get into. But first up, I am making sourdough pizza, so I'll need to prep that and I'm gonna take you along. This is the book that I've been using to make everything that's sourdough. Um, it is A Perfect Loaf by Maurizio Leo. Um, this book is fantastic. It tells you way too much information, uh, <laughs> but I'm just making sourdough pizza. I got all my ingredients lined up. And first step is to prep the Levain, which is what I'll be doing with my sourdough starter right here. And I do have a Goldie, um, if you've heard of it. It's Goldie by Sour House. This is not sponsored by Sour House, but I will say this Goldie has been very, very helpful. It gets really cold in our house, especially during the winter time and you can't really regulate the heat. Uh, in terms of like too hot or too cold. Uh, we usually keep the temperature pretty low here, but I have my starter and it, it's been difficult for me to kind of activate it uh, because it is so cold. And so what this Sour House does, what that is, it's like this little cute little container. You put your starter inside of it and it regulates the temperature and make sure that you're 
activate your your starter activates and your your yeast because sourdough starter is bacteria based so your yeast doesn't go bad it grows it's healthy and it stays fresh fresh but um it's been really nice and helpful because baking has gotten a lot easier and so that is a sour house and i got it for christmas and i don't know if it's something that i really really need but i wanted it and i like it so and i use it so it's great yay <laughs> my Levain. Levain is basically just your discard, so your starter that has not been fed, and then water and flour that you're using. And I use the King Arthur all-purpose flour. So what you do, you just put the, pop the lid on, and that yellow light says that it is the golden temperature for your starter. Sorry, you can't see what's inside of it. It's a little dirty. I transferred the rest of my starter into this nice clean weck jar and I'm just gonna put it in the fridge because I don't need to use it. I think this weekend I'll make some cinnamon rolls so we'll have to pop this back into the Goldie but for now, that's all we have to do. And uh, now we just let the Levain sit for 12 hours. So we'll see, I'll set a timer and then we'll see how it looks. Good morning everybody it is the next day it's saturday i realized i didn't film the rest of the evening just because mark and i had dinner and then we started watching what did we watch we started watching true detective because the new season is coming out so we're doing a rewatch and i haven't seen anything past season one i don't think i finished season one but started we did that and then i just read and went to sleep at midnight i will give you a reading update but I figured first we can kind of see where what happened with the sourdough and how it's how it's looking and if it's ready for the next step. Here's the Levain. It's the water ripe sourdough starter and flour. And I realized I didn't give you the amount that I used. I used 47 grams of water, 47 grams of flour, and five grams of starter. So it looks like it's pretty ready to use. It should be bubbly on top, which we can see that it is. It should be bubbly on the sides and there should be a sour smell and hmm, definitely smell it from all the way over here. So it looks like it's ready. And the next step now is to mix it in with everything else. So we're gonna mix the dough together and it says, 
warm or cool water. So the temperature meets the recipe. I don't really care for DT, T, whatever that is. Um, so I'm just going to mix 582 grams of flour, whole wheat flour, which I don't have. So I'm just going to use bread flour or I might just use regular flour. I need to look if I need, can swap that out with almond flour. I can't remember. I mean, um, all purpose flour. Water, fine salt, and levain. And here are the amounts that I will be using. That's what I really like about this book is it tells you all of the steps in like a brief overview right here. And then it goes into detail and even tells you and then tells you like the amount the exact amount you need as you go throughout the steps so yeah this all together until the dough is kind of clingy and just all blended in really well. I am pretty silly. I, really, I have a KitchenAid mixer and normally for bread baking I don't use it but I should have used it for this. The recipe calls for a lot. So the recipe is 582 grams of all-purpose flour. 70 grams of whole wheat flour and nobody come at me. I'm not perfect. I was lazy and I just used 70 grams of all purpose flour, all purpose flour instead of whole wheat flour. I'm sure it's just gonna taste as good. <laughs> 435 grams of water, 14 grams of sea salt, and then that leftover Levain that I had, that I had created, which is 99 grams. So once this is all mixed in together, we're just going to do a warm bulk fermentation. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven. We have a proofing button. So I'll use that so that it can kind of ferment and rise a little bit and should be for a total of two hours and 30 minutes. But I will be stretching and folding it during. All right, my dough is looking doughy, nobody judge. Like I said, I'm not a perfect bread sourdough baker, maker, but I've done this before and it tasted delicious. So the book is a lot more technical and I need to actually sit down and kind of read it. But if you're in a pinch, this is what I do. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven. We have our bread proof setting. And then we'll let it sit for two hours and 30 minutes. Hi, 
am back. The bread is in the oven. I thought I would give you a reading update. I read The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I got to chapter... I read a little bit last night. I know I said I was at 100 before. And I got to chapter... If I could find my bookmark. Oh, I took my bookmark off. Great. <laughs> found it. I got a chapter 19 which is 144. This book is fast paced. We get right into it. This story is about a girl named Raya. She is human and she is the fa she is the daughter to the king of the house of night and the king of and the house of night is composed of two different types of vampires. There's the Rishan vampires who used to rule and then there's the Hiaj I don't think I'm pronouncing it right. Maybe I am. Hiaj, H-I-A-J. And that is the, that's the house that, uh, that is the type of vampire that her father is. And the Hiaj um, vampires took over years ago. So uh, that's kind of a little bit about where she comes from. Um, she was found by her father when her family and home was attacked a long, long time ago. So that's why her father, who is a vampire, takes care of her and has been training her all of her life. She wants to... Uh, she wants to be a vampire, but the thing is, is that when you try to turn a human into a vampire, there is, I think, a one in third chance that you will survive. So you can't really do it normally. I mean, the natural way to become a vampire is to reproduce like two vampires. Every hundred years or so, there is a tournament called the Kajari, and the Kajari is hosted by the goddess of death. And one thing to note is that the vampires are technically considered the children of the goddess of death. And so the Kachari happens. It's a tournament of five different trials. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five different trials. And they happen three weeks apart from the, the previous trial. Raya, she puts her name in. And to do that, you have to kind of give the goddess your blood and blessing so so she can give you her blessing so she puts her name in and the story starts right away she gets the the kajari happens and the first trial is the full moon trial each trial is based off of the um a a moon i wish there was more to the world building because we start off so fast with oraya's story and how she is at the house of night and what her her path is and her journey but there are three different houses we have the house of night the house of shadow and the house of blood um like i said the house of night has the hiaj and the rishan and the i'm not sure who's in the house of shadow or house of blood i hope we meet some characters that are a part of those the the main guy in this story which i wonder if he's the lover love interest or if there's gonna be someone else but the main guy is ryan rain r-a-i-h-n and he is a rashawn vampire so there's always like this enemies to maybe lover situation mostly just enemy situation right now because he is the other he's the other vampire group within the house of night so they're always like butting heads the writing is by no means brilliant and amazing but it's just fun to read i do like this story uh like i said i think there needed to be a little bit more world building my world building is this like magenta color i don't know if you can see i'm really bad at okay yeah it's like oh it's like that pink mauve ish color and i only have one sticky for world build world building um majority of it is just vampire details vampires are back vampires are in in 2024 last year end of last year i watched i rewatched twilight and then mark and i watched van helsing so i think this year we need to start watching the underworld movies again i think there's four or five i've only seen the first two but vampires are in I think werewolves will be making a comeback too. Uh, <laughs> that's that's my update. I'm going to make some coffee and get to reading. I will talk to you soon for the next reading update. Or actually, I'll talk to you when I need to work on the bread.
So we'll, we need to fold the bread in 15 more minutes. Got my coffee. That's fresh. Yum. Got my book. I've been annotating a little bit throughout the books. I think I mentioned this last night, but the reason why I started doing it is just so I can get a better understanding of the plot, I tend to forget things, especially important parts of the plot that happen or little things within the book that I like where I'm like, oh, I really like this, but then I forget or like there's no way for me to remember what page it was at or not. So I've been annotating and it's been fun. I have four stickies. This mustard color is anything that's important that has to do with the plot. The bluish, the light blue is vampire information. The like grandma brown is right here at this color. That is world building. And then the anything that's green, like a dark green is my favorite quotes or like things I like throughout the book. I chose these colors because they match the the sleeve, the cover of the book. Um, and so I thought it would be fun when I put it back on. You'd be able to kind of see and match the colors of the book. It's been fun to annotate. I think it's helped, especially when I'm telling you more about the plot and sharing my reading updates. So I think I'm gonna continue doing it. for the first fold so looking good to do this two more times after this first one bread with avocado toast. The coffee machine is cleaning itself. Got my coffee. And now it's time to watch Monarch Legends Legacy of Monsters season finale.
I also forgot to mention that I did roll the pizza dough three times every 30 minutes and let it sit for an other hour in the oven proofing and I just put it in the fridge. It needs to sit in the fridge. The book says 24 hours. So then I wouldn't be able to eat, we wouldn't be able to eat it until tomorrow. So after 24 hours tomorrow, I'm supposed to then take it out of the fridge and leave it out at room temperature for another six hours. And that's just a lot of work and we wanna eat it for dinner. So we're escalating the process and just gonna let it sit in the fridge up until I think like three-ish or so. And then I'll take it out of the fridge, put it in the oven so it can like proof a little bit more faster and at room temperature. So this is just me experimenting and we'll see how it goes. The bread dough looks delicious though, the pizza dough. It it looks really good. I, if I do say so myself, hair flip, hair flip. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, it's almost lunchtime, so we'll see what we get up into. I'm back. It is now 6.15. I know it's been quite a few hours. I think I stopped reading at around noon. So I got to page 200 of Serpent in the Wings of Night. I took a break to go walk on the treadmill, do a quick workout, showered, ate lunch. And then Mark and I started watching a few more episode, episodes of True Detective season one. And I was writing, and during that time while I was watching, since I'd already kind of seen the season before, I ended up working on uh, my next video, which is going to be a anticipated um, releases video. So keep an eye on that. I'm very excited. I'll probably work on filming it tomorrow and then edit it and then post it early next week. So stay tuned. But I did want to give a reading update. Like I said, I'm on page 200. So almost halfway through. I think there's a little over 400 pages in this book. There is a development with Rain and Araya's relationship, but it's starting to become more of like a friendship, you know, enemies to lovers, but they, I think they've hit that point where they, they both realize that they want to work together and she trusts him. Um, so they end up, but so what's happening now is they are working on training together for the half moon trial. In terms of world building, still not very much going on. There is a hint of vampire politics that I'm getting with the 200 pages, not much at all. But I'm wondering if more of the politics will be kind of sprinkled in and shared as we get into the last half of the book. There is a second book coming out. I think it comes out in the fall. So I'm interested to keep reading and seeing where Araya gets up to. It is 6.15 and almost dinner time and I know that I'm breaking the rules. The dough was supposed to sit overnight and I only left it in the fridge for about six hours. So I'm going to take it out and well it's already out and it's being proofed technically so I can like speed up the process. I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not, but I'm just doing it. And we are going to eat in about two hours. We're gonna make sourdough pizza. I am excited to show the finished project product because I think it's gonna be delicious regardless of what it looks like. <laughs> I'm excited for the home stretch. This next half sounds like it's going to be action packed and fast paced. Um, this whole book, the, the first half even has been wildly easy to read and I just couldn't put it down except for the breaks that I took. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to share. And I will see you with my next reading update, hopefully with a finished book. But if not, just another update. Hi. The dough is ready. Look at that. It has risen quite a bit. You can see the bubbles at the bottom. So what we're gonna do next is I have preheated the oven to 550 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna add some flour on here and split up the dough into four pieces. So we'll have four pieces, four pizzas total. So we'll have one tonight and then have leftovers. And what's nice about this pizza dough is you can just stick it in the freezer and it'll last for a few months. I think, I believe, don't quote me on that, but yeah, it's that simple. So let's get to it.
ready to be cooked. We got some peppers and jalapenos and a lot of mozzarella. Too much mozzarella. There's no such thing as too much mozzarella. But the oven is almost at preheating and we're gonna pop it in. Let's see what the finished product looks like. Hi everybody, it is the next day, Sunday. I woke up this morning and went to Pilates, came back, showered. I finished the book. I did it. Um, I was going through footage from Friday and yesterday and I realized a lot of the reading updates that I gave you had spoilers and I felt really bad and decided that this book did not deserve spoilers. I really enjoyed it, so I cut through a lot of what I had, edited it out, tried to be a little bit more vague, and decided to just start fresh at the end of this book and give you kind of a synopsis in my thoughts and how I felt reading this book. And I will say, it was so much fun. I finished this book and I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun to read. I couldn't put it down. I finished it in less than three days. This is a fantasy leading vampire story and it kind of turned into epic fantasy. There's a lot more to it, which I really appreciate and like. I haven't read a vampire book since Twilight and so this was very refreshing and fun to read. I thought Chris Abroad meant the author did a really good job of turning this world that has humans into something more with more fantasy. Um, she includes a world with vampires and humans and that was really fun especially to see the interaction between humans and vampires in this setting. I know I gave a synopsis at the beginning of this video, but I wanted to mention it again. This story is about a girl named Oriya. She is human. She is saved by the Vampire King. His name is Vincent, and he is the Vampire King of the House of Night, which is one of the houses within the Vampire Kingdom that we have here. She ends up growing up with her father, who is a vampire, in the House of Night, and Oriya has to navigate growing up being considered prey just because she is human living in a world of vampires. The story centers around Oriya and a set of trials that happens every hundred years or so. These trials are created by the goddess of death. Her name is Neoxia and there are five trials total and the person who wins a set of trials, gets their ultimate wish, any wish that they would like that Neoxia will grant. The trials are very important in a big plot point of the book. No trial was the same and what's interesting that with the trials is we saw that the contestants were not only using their physical abilities but they had to tackle their emotional and mental abilities as well that they do have and hone in on them. I really enjoy the trials overall and this book gave me Hunger Games vibes, but with vampires. <laughs> the character development in this story is pretty slow and I enjoyed that. Oriya's character is 
kind of seen as this girl who has grown up always with her guard and throughout the story you see her letting her guard down, learning to trust, and falling in love. And what I also liked is that the be at, at the beginning of every part of the story there are interlude chapters where you get a glimpse at gl you get a glimpse of Oriah's past. And I think that really helps wrap her story as a whole as she does grow throughout the book. I really liked the pacing of the romance in this story as well. You, I would think, that, I personally think that the romance is just a secondary plot of the book and I really like that. I know this is heavily considered romanticy and there is romance, but it's sprinkled in throughout and the trials and the plot point and the character development of Oriah is just a lot more and I appreciate that, but I do like the romance as well. <laughs> I wish that we would have gotten more information about the politics and just world building in general throughout the beginning of the book. I feel like a lot of it was just thrown at us at the end and there is a glossary which is really helpful in terms of words and places but the map at the beginning of the book was not helpful at all. It, it was very broad and I personally wish it had more detail to it but in terms of the politics I a lot of it is at the end of it and I wish that it was sprinkled in a little bit more throughout, but nothing really to complain about. It was still really good. The ending was unexpected and left me wanting more. I am so excited to read the next book. It comes out April 12th, I believe, around then, sometime in April, I'm not positive, but I will be picking this up and reading it right away. I assume that the next book is going to be just as wild as this one. I loved it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd give it four out of five. Hi everybody, it's Future Shuba here from Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. I am updating and uh, editing the vlog from this past weekend that you have been watching. I realized that I only read one book and that was Serpent and the Wings of Night. I liked it a lot as you might have heard. I didn't puzzle. I didn't do a lot of the things that I said I was going to do, but I had a lovely weekend and I hope you did too. I'm just going to leave this vlog here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you for another video and on my next video. Thanks. Bye everybody.